For this video, we're going to go over some terms and concepts related to structures. First term is function. This is the purpose for a structure. Why was it built? What was it meant to do? And then form. What does it look like? What shape does it take? And these are usually connected. The function tends to influence and have an impact on the form. Gravity is an important concept to, to understand when we're talking about structures. Gravity is the force that the force of attraction that, that applies to all objects. And it's constantly in play. Everything, all the time, it has, the, it has gravity as a force pulling on it towards the Earth's surface. It's also considered a non-contact force. And I'll get a little bit more into that on the next slide. So forces. Forces are usually a push or a pull force. It, for example, uh, if, I'm a, if I'm trying to shoot a basket, uh, I can push the ball in the general direction of the basketball net. That is a contact force. I have to actually be touching the ball in order to push it in that direction. But once the basket fall, flies through the air and goes through the basket, gravity, a non-contact force, simply pulls that basketball to the earth. So there are contact forces, which are pushes and pulls, and the only non-contact force is gravity. When we're talking about forces, we want to think about magnitude and direction. So the magnitude is how strong is the force. If we use gravity as an example, the magnitude of the gravitational force depends on the mass of the object. So the, the smaller, the lighter, the less matter it has in it, the less gravity force there is pulling it towards the Earth. The larger and more matter, more mass that it has, uh, the heavier it is, the more gravitational force required to pull it towards the Earth. Direction. The force of gravity is always pulling in one direction, uh, but there can be applied forces. For example, I'm applying a push force to my basketball to send it in a sideways direction uh, to go into the basket, and then gravity pulls it downwards towards the surface. So the arrows show direction, and the size of the arrow shows magnitude. Remember that for when you're labeling diagrams. So we were talking about mass and weight. And this is, it's a little confusing because we always talk about how much we weigh and what our weight is, and that's actually an incorrect term. The actual definition of mass is the quantity of matter that an object has. This is what we're measuring when we stand on the scale. We're measuring it in grams or kilograms. The weight is the force of gravity on the structure, so or on our bodies as it's being pulled towards uh, the, the Earth's surface. And that's measured in newtons. We don't generally talk about newtons, we generally talk about our mass. Uh, there can also be, forces can come from outside of the structure and they're called external forces, or they can be coming from within the structure and those are internal forces. There are four types of internal forces. They are tension, compression, torsion, and shear. Tension is when there's a pulling of the particles apart. Uh, apart. Uh, so if you imagine like an elastic band and I'm pulling on the elastic band, I am pulling those particles apart and stretching it out. Compression is when an object is pressed or squeezed. So think about your mattress at home and when you push on it, you're compressing the particles within your mattress and squeezing it. Torsion is that twist. So we think about the cloths we use in class and when we twist them to get the water out, that is a torsion, it's a twisting of the particles in an object. Shear. This is when uh, an object is being pushed or pulled in two different directions. So there's two forces acting on it at the same time. We hear the expression um, shear winds and the shear force when, when there's an extreme storm. So for an example, when a tree is just a tree, there is a, the force of gravity is acting on it and pulling it towards the Earth's surface. When there is a hurricane, there is gravity, but there is also winds that are applying force in an opposite direction. So you have two forces going in opposite directions, uh, acting on an object. This often results in uh, a, an object being torn apart, or uh, broken, bent, um, or cut. Now 
Another thing we're going to talk about are loads. Loads are the forces that are acting on a structure. And we think about the word load, it means you know to carry something, to haul something. So keep that in mind. A dead load is the mass of the structure itself. So it has to be able to hold its own mass. Uh, and so we talk about you know the bottom of a structure may be wider depending on how high a structure is because it needs to be able to actually hold the weight of the structure itself. Sorry, the mass of the structure itself. And then there's a live load. These are the objects that are added to a structure. And when a structure is being constructed, it has to consider how it's going to manage those masses. So if we think of a bridge, so we have our bridge here. It has its dead load, which is the actual mass of the bridge and the gravitational force that's acting upon it. But then you're going to have cars that are in a live load that are added objects to the mass of the bridge and then we have the force on that car, so the, the gravity force on that car going in this direction. There's also a dynamic load, and these are forces other than gravity that are acting upon a structure. In this diagram here, that would be an example of the water. So the water rushing by the base of this structure is another load that it has to be able to, to hold. So it could be things like water, wind, or snow.